with Wine Tasting 101. It's just the nuts and bolts that really help get you to industry events, and feeling more comfortable when you're tasting wine. So here are just a few tips that will keep you tasting the, all the wines that are out there because it'll help you build your palate, number one, but also if you find a wine that you think is so dynamite but you just can't afford, take your little cell phone and take a picture of it because when you go home and you type in online, bring up the vineyard, he, they all, almost always will have second, third, and fourth growth wines under that top selling award-winning wine that you can't afford. So if you can't afford number one, the grapes that they're using, the same vine, the same earth, are producing a lot of the same flavors and characteristics that you can't afford in a wine that you can't, okay? So get out there and taste everything, but keep it safe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's just do a real quick wine tasting 101. What you're going to be doing when somebody pours into your glass, they're going to pour it this way, and, and the nice way to let them know that you've had, that there's enough in your glass is to push up a little bit, because at, at some of the, the tables, they'll try to pour lots in your glass so you can't really taste anything else. You know, after you're tasting theirs, you're whooped. So get comfortable <laughs> pushing your glass up a little bit. And also, this is a huge tasting, right? If you're going to taste a thousand, <laughs> hello. Uh, <laughs> and then at the end of each table is a bucket, so get used to throwing away, okay? It's not what we're used to, but get used to it, okay? And girls, you'll even see women spitting into the bucket, okay? So brace yourself and act like you see this all the time. I always see women spitting. Anyway, okay, so let's do, somebody just poured wine into my glass, and I'm going to look at it because this is my product, right? And the, the one reason that I'm going to hold the stem, even if it feels a little weird, I'm going to hold by the stem and not by the bowl, because I want to be able to see everything in my, my product, right? And this is my tool, okay? Um, and you don't want fingerprints on your tool, right? <laughs> okay. So you're going to look at your product or your tool, and you're, you're basically looking for color. Young wines have brilliant, opulent purples. When you're talking about reds, and your white wines are going to be so bright, sometimes they look as clear as water. Um, as they age, your, your red wines are going to get a little tinge of brick, like a little burnt or orange, and your white wines are going to get a little more um, orange and yellow, maybe even straw color. Okay, So just looking at this, I can see that it's a young wine. <coughs> young meaning this year all the way back to like 2004. Not too much change in color. Once you go into 2003, I think I'm going to start seeing a little bit of change, maybe even right on the top. So I'm looking at it for color, and then I'm going to look at the legs. And the way you do that is you tilt your glass to the side and then let the liquid fall back down. Does everyone see where the liquid was? Okay, it's still clinging there, so it's kind of a medium to full body wine. If it sheets right down, it's a light body wine. If it's still clinging like VIX 44, it's a full body wine. Okay, so go ahead, and we've already looked at it, we've looked at, check the legs. Now go ahead and put your nose in, okay? But stick your nose in, John, don't smell like a girl. Stick your nose in. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, get comfortable being comfortable with your wine and your tool. Yeah? yeah? Everyone's comfortable putting their nose right in? Come on, Jen. Try. Come on! You're at a big time wine tasting event and you want people to think that you're a buyer for per se, right? Yeah, you don't want any of that scent to escape. You want to be, so this is, the whole exercise tonight is getting comfortable, okay? With things that aren't normal, normally comfortable, okay? So you're a big time buyer, you're smelling, because one of the reasons why you don't want to bring the wine right to your lips, does anybody know why? No one has ever attended my events before and they don't remember a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> David, why don't you bring, why don't you taste your wine first? Why do you smell first? Well, I thought that the, uh, when you taste, uh, the aroma or smell is a, a high, a much more uh, censored perception than the taste itself. Correct. And it's all part. Thank you, Alvaro. Thank you so much. <laughs> all part of the same system here. You smell over 600 different things, right? Does anyone know how many things we taste? Six or five. five. Six. Five. Very nice. Six, five. Six, five, yeah. Well, in Japan it's six, and here in America it's five. <laughs> they have that, that sixth taste. Okay, so we smelled our wine. Let's go ahead and swirl.
because you want to get a little bit of air into the, in, into your wine. You'll have to practice this later when you have something in your glass. <laughs> <laughs> I was so you don't hold it. I was so you hold it by the stem. You're changing the temperature. You hold that too, when you're white wine. But at, a, at an actual wine tasting, like an event where that's your whole goal is to look and buy, and this is your product that you're going to be buying cases of, you're not so interested in, you know, because you're drink, sipping, sipping and dumping so fast that it wouldn't change anything. Right. It's your fingerprints at these events. <laughs> okay, so did we swirl? We swirl. Mm -hmm. Come on, Peter, give a real good swirl. Can we have more to swirl with? <laughs> sure, actually, Patrick is going to float around <laughs> when he feels like it. <laughs> And, uh, and you'll have more to swirl with. Okay, now, those who have wine in your glass, go ahead and stick your nose back in and tell me, do you, do you sense anything different? Mm. What? I don't know, it's just more uh, potent. Than more you know. potent, okay. So that's, what you, that's called releasing the bouquet. Your, your, your wine is gonna, gonna become more potent, but also what you're doing too, when, it, when it's becoming more potent, it's also releasing, the same way if you were decanting a wine, it would be becoming more mellow, okay? So swirling, when you start on this path of, uh, of wine as a passion, you're gonna start swirling everything. <laughs> you're seeing all your orange. You don't want a canyon here. I mean, if you have canyons, then it would make them look more different. Um, yes, all of your red wines are knit with tannins, mm -hmm. right? It's that, I just licked a tree kind of feeling. Because all wine is pressed white, right? You've got your barrel of white grapes, you've got your barrel of red grapes. When they press it, all the liquid comes out <coughs> white. But in the red grapes, they take all the stems, the skins, the pulp, and the seeds, and they throw it back in, and that's where you get the color from. So with those stems, gets that tannin that gives it some shelf life. Okay, so it, it's able to age. So when you're opening a young wine, you might have that extra, wow, tannic feeling on your throat. Some people love that, some people hate that. So this is one of the things that you want to decide what you like, okay? So we smelled it again and it smells more potent. Now put a little bit in your mouth and we've got a clock right above Kirk. Kurt, sorry. Kurt's going to put his hand up like Vanna. <laughs> right about, so try to hold on to what, the little bit of wine in your mouth for like five or six seconds. So don't swallow it right away like it's Friday night, I'll have another. This is now our <laughs> wine tasting. You want to experience it a little bit differently. Make some decisions about what you're, what, what's in your mouth. Is it really tannic? Is it smooth? Do I like it tannic? Is it, when I swallowed, Barbara, was, did it go away right away? Or is it a long finish? Is it still there after a minute? Because there are some wines that last, the, the finish is over a minute. Okay, so these are some of the decisions that you want to make while you're at a wine tasting. Okay, so we basically looked at the color, looked at the legs, and then we swirled and then sipped, right? The one thing that you don't want to do, um, you, you definitely never want to bring the wine right to your lips because you can smell so many different things, right? And you want to, if you're not smelling it, you're not going to taste it. That's the bottom line, okay? So, the one thing that I will caution you though, an older wine, the 1970s and earlier, you may not want to swirl it before you taste it. If it's an older wine, Bordeaux, Margot, you may want to just bring it right to your nose and then taste it right away without swirling it because swirling it the same way that it became more potent and released, it may push your wine over the edge and make it more flabby. Okay? It may be perfect, it may be drinking perfect right now. Okay? Um, the, you're going to hear some wild descriptors at a wine tasting event. Things like, oh, that, I, I get cat pee on the nose. Okay? <laughs> you would, yeah, that's, that's the first reaction. But you're going to hear everything. And all of these are good adjectives. The I'll let you get back to drinking wine, and I'll be discussing each wine as I pour. And do you have any questions? No? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs>